by grace, by grace, you are saved and have raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, now here's what we want to look at. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them for we are his workmanship his workmanship not your work his workmanship now over in uh, Philippians chapter 1, just one verse. Verse 6. Being confident. I'll just look over at somebody and tell them, tell them I, I ain't cocky. <laughs> I'm just confident. Look at somebody else and tell them I ain't, I ain't arrogant. I'm just confident. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He that hath begun a good work in me will perform it until it's finished. Touch your neighbor. I, I got a kind of long subject, but it, it might be as long as my message. But just touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, he that started me will finish me. And that's the reason for my confidence. One more time. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he that started me will finish me. And that's the reason for my confidence. Give God a praise as you take your seat. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Living in a world that seems to be full of pessimism almost everywhere you turn makes it a challenge even to the child of God to maintain 24 7 an optimism and a sanguine persona that's full and confident of a godly conviction that things will improve because today is the first day of the best days of my life there are many today who are struggling with hope yet every morning they wake up just before leaving the house they put on their public face in order to maintain an image but in reality it's nothing more than an exterior facade to cover their pain Understand, my brothers and sisters, with all the painful realities of life, it is more than a concept or some notion to maintain the feelings of certainty about anything, sometimes about anyone. So then staying positive, staying optimistic and hopeful, presents at times a challenge to the will to continue. It's like, oh Lord, how long? How long do I have to deal with this 
upend my life. And so we should understand that to live life with some sense of emotional balance and stability, there must be present within the mind and spirit the strong conviction that because I am the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus, then perseverance is more than just a possibility, but it's a reality for the destiny God has predetermined for me to have. Somebody once said, the harder you work, the harder it is to give up. People who are not doing much of anything are the same people who complain about everything. And complaining about something in your life is counterproductive because at the end of the day, few people, few people in the world are interested in the storms that you are in. They just want to know how to bring in their ship. And it's, well, it was the English writer, John Ruskin, who said, the highest reward, and I quote, for a man's work is not what he gets out of it, but what he becomes by it. it, it it's the journey, not the destiny, that determines character. So then the price of success uh, is perseverance and the price of failure is much cheaper it doesn't cost much to fail quitting is cheap understand that the rewards for those who persevere far exceed the pain that precedes your victory understand where there is no conflict there can be no kingship it is if you suffer with me, you shall also reign with me. One man said, and I quote, no man is ever whipped until he quits in his own mind. And a mind is a terrible thing to waste, especially when it's telling you to give up. And that's the very reason the Bible tells us, let this mind be in you. And that was also in Christ Jesus. And never was there a thought in the mind of Christ of giving up. Understand, as a man thinks, the Bible says, in his heart, so is he. And in every situation, we must always think. We must always remember, first and foremost, that we are the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus. The quality or state of being perfect is not your work. It is the work of the Lord. Freedom from fault and freedom from defects, flaws, is the work of the Lord. And the quality or state of being saintly is the work of the Lord. The exemplification of superior excellence is the work of the Lord. An unsurpassable degree of accuracy and excellence is not your work. It is the work of the Lord. And he always will be there and wherever he is needed. And somebody said there is no failure in God. And listen to the words of Jeremiah found in the book of Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 through verse 24. It is not of the Lord, it is rather of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Don't y'all know that every day you wake up, what you need for the day has already been provided. Our God, our God has both the will and the power to get the job done. The trials of today, uh, the fiery test of today, the devil's effort to discourage you today, uh, the difficult challenges of today, 
None of them can consume. None of them can destroy you. None of them can squander your faith and confidence in God because each day on the calendar of time, new mercies and the unfailing compassions of God cover your life, cover your family, and cover your finances. And that's why I heard somebody say no weapon formed against us will prosper. But every tongue that rises against you in the judgment, you shall condemn. For this is the inheritance of the saints. I touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't worried about you. As a matter of fact, you can look the devil in the eye right now and tell the devil it ain't going to happen, Captain. You can look at the devil. Somebody ought to put your foot on the devil right now and just tell him it ain't going to happen, Captain. I'm almost through, y'all. <laughs> and the reason it ain't going to happen because if the Lord be for me, he's more than the world against me. In other words, Edgar, who can stand before him when we call on that great name? <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. And, and so these verses of scriptures are a classic, classic example of how uh, the Apostle Paul wrote on the doctrine of salvation. And they establish a bedrock of truth upon which rests everything we can know about how we are saved and why we are saved. Uh, this passage of scriptures in Ephesians establish a, a foundation of truth that all of us who are born again must understand if we wish to grasp the full meaning of the word grace. In verse 1 through 3, Paul reminds the church of Ephesus of their former spiritual state prior to coming to a faith in Jesus Christ. First of all, he says you were dead in sin. Uh, the word dead in Greek is necros, not negro, but necros, which means a corpse or a dead body. However, the apostle is not talking about a physical state of deadness, but rather a spiritual state of deadness, which refers to our spiritual life. Uh, the Ephesians were alive physically, but they were dead spiritually. The apostle chose this comparison because it accurately describes not only the nature of an unbeliever, but also the impossibility of an unbeliever recognizing or correcting his own condition. Just as a corpse uh, cannot revive itself to life, uh, neither can an unbeliever revive his own spirit uh, into new life. Uh, and this state of spiritual deadness is according to the course of this world. Uh, and the word course in the Greek is ion, uh, which means age or a space uh, of time. Uh, and so here Paul explains that the natural state of every man and woman uh, during this age or this space of time is spiritual deadness. Uh, and we know from the book of Romans and from the book of Genesis uh, that the cause for humanity's dead state is the sin of Adam, which we inherited at birth. And so Paul here explain, is explaining that the Ephesian spiritual deadness prior to faith was not unique. They simply shared in a condition that affects all humanity. Everybody, I don't care how cute you are, I don't care how wealthy, what color, how tall, short, everybody because begins their life on earth in a state of spiritual deadness and apart from a work of God uh, to revive our spirits, uh, this state will continue uninterrupted until our physical death. But 
today, today, today for us uh, who believe in the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we have been moved by his workmanship uh, from our prior position as sons of the devil dead in sin uh, to our new state as sons of God uh, now alive uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, if any man be in Christ, uh, he is a new creature. Uh, all things pass away and all things become new and so according to this truth one must conclude that our spiritual state is not reversible I'm going to say that again our spiritual state is not reversible because according to Romans chapter 8 verse 31 and through 39 nothing can tear us away from the love of God not death not life Neither angels or demons worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell, uh, nor the powers in the sky above or in the earth below, uh, nothing at all creation uh, will ever be able to separate us from the love of God uh, which is in Christ Jesus uh, who is the source of my confidence uh, and the maker and shaper of my life. Uh, I'm confident I'm confident uh, that he did not bring me this far uh, to leave me here. And so many believe uh, that this is a biblical doctrine uh, that those who are truly saved uh, will persevere to the end uh, and they will not lose their salvation. Uh, does not mean that some who are truly saved uh, will never lose faith at times, uh, but it does mean that they will ultimately persevere in faith uh, in spite of failures so as not to lose their salvation. Uh, and this doctrine of perseverance is rooted uh, in God's unconditional election. Uh, notice the words of Jesus uh, in St. Matthew chapter 10. Uh, uh, St. John, I'm sorry, St. John chapter 10 beginning with verse 27 uh, where Jesus says emphatically uh, my sheep uh, my sheep uh, hear my voice uh, and I know them and they follow me uh, and what I give unto them uh, eternal life and they shall never perish uh, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand uh, however this does not suggest uh, by any stretch of your imagination uh, that one can continue in a life uh, of willful sin and still be confident of their salvation uh, that's a vein that's a carnal mind set goes uh, set that goes against biblical teachings uh, warning us of the qualifications uh, of true saving faith uh, in other words you must be in Christ uh, and Christ must be in you uh, if you are saved uh, it's not about how well you dance it's not about how well you sing uh, it's not about how well you preach uh, or teach uh, gifted and talented people uh, can do all of the above uh, but the elect the elect uh, of God uh, the elect are known by their ability uh, to persevere uh, and a willingness to hear the voice of God uh, and follow him uh, and so today there, uh, there's a reason uh, for my confidence uh, the Bible says we are the workmanship uh, of God uh, created in Christ Jesus uh, and what God is working on, God will finish. And today I'm not living in some la la land. I acknowledge the reality of opposition and adversity, the pain the shame uh, uh, some of the things we have to go through is real uh, the suffering is real uh, the lack is real uh, the need the challenges uh, are real uh, the devils the devils uh, and the demons that we have to fight uh, are real uh, but today I bear witness uh, that the God of glory uh, and the light of Jesus Christ uh, has guaranteed uh, that your future looks better than your past uh, do I have have a witness up in here. Uh, look at somebody and say, neighbor, uh, I'm here to tell you uh, that your future looks better 
than your past. I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm convinced that it won't always be like this. And heaven told me to tell you, keep on fighting. I don't care what you are going through. I don't care what your situation is. Keep on fighting. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight through darkness. Fight through the pain. Fight through disappointment. Fight through discouragement. Fight the good fight of faith. And remember God's grace is sufficient for you. I don't care what you're going through. Hold on to your confidence. Cast not away. Cast not away your confidence. Which has great recompense of reward. And then the Bible tells us, uh, be not weary, be not weary, uh, be not weary in well-doing, uh, for in due season uh, you shall reap uh, if you faint not. Uh, stop somebody real good uh, and tell them hang tough. Uh, hang up, don't hang up. Uh, hang tough. Uh, your promised land, uh, your new Jerusalem, uh, your little acre flowing uh, with the milk and honey, uh, your future, your dreams, uh, your predetermined destiny, is about to manifest. God is getting ready to do something up in your life. And you don't have to wait until your battle is over. You can, through a manifestation of the Holy Ghost, go ahead and give God praise for what you know is on the way. Clap your hands and give God a praise. Somebody ought to make a joy for noise. Up in this house, my brothers and sisters, Hear the prophet Isaiah huh, who told us huh, he gives power, he gives power huh, to the faint huh, and to them, to them huh, that have no might, huh, he increases their strength. Huh. Touch the neighbor say, I'm not getting weaker, huh, I'm getting stronger. Huh. Y'all ain't talking to nobody. Huh. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, huh, I'm not about to give up, huh. I'm getting stronger. I feel my faith getting stronger. He gives power to the faint. To them that have no might, he increases their strength. And even though your young folks shall faint, and your young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. High five somebody. High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, hang on in there. God's getting ready to fix it for you. He'll bless your coming in. He'll bless your coming out. You're going out. Huh? He'll restore your soul. Huh? He'll lead you in paths huh? of righteousness. Huh? He'll prepare a table before you huh? in the presence of your enemies. Huh? He'll anoint your head huh? with oil huh? and cause your cup huh? to run over. Huh? I heard somebody say, huh? won't he do it? Huh? Look that's your neighbor, say neighbor, won't he do it? Won't he bring you out all right? Y'all ain't talking to nobody. Grab somebody by the hand and put some anointing on it and say, neighbor, won't he bring you out? All right. Won't he be your doctor in a sick room and your lawyer in a courtroom? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he bless you in the city and bless you in the field he'll bless you when you come and when you go I heard somebody say that late in the midnight hour God gonna turn some things around I wish I had about five of y'all that would just turn around symbolic of what God is doing up in your life and tell the devil didn't I tell you that everything is going to be alright somebody on the cop your hands lift your voice open your mouth make a joy for no unto the Lord tell your neighbor say neighbor I came tonight to tell the devil I got confident that everything will be alright because I 
am the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus. I know who it is. If the Lord be for me, who can be against me? I just got this feeling that everything will be all right. Trouble is in my way. I got a problem. Sometimes I lay awake at night, but that's all right. I got this feeling something down inside of me keeps telling me, Richard, everything will be all right. Do I have a person in this place that believes everything? We'll be all right. Grab somebody by the hand. Shake it like you're going to take it. And say, neighbor, because, because I am, I am, I am the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus. I have a reason for confidence. I got a feeling that I'm coming out. Do I have anybody up in here who believes you're coming out? Clap your hands, lift your voice, give God a praise, and shout, I, 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 coming out. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a feeling. No, tell him I got a revelation. It's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. He's turning it. He's fixing it. I'm through. Woo! I am. Workmanship. It's not about me. It's not about my ability. It's not about my capacity. It's all about him. Touch your name says it's all about him. And I am the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus. And that's the reason. That's the reason. I'm confident. He's got this feeling. And somebody said, anyway you bless me, I'll be satisfied. I've had had last couple of years some real tests they had to deal with and there's times when you wonder is there any end to all of this because you get over one thing and something else shows up you know you all know my testimony I have had to go on dialysis because for the first 75 years of my life, I had no, no issues. But I had to go on this dialysis. And I wanted to get a kidney transplant because dialysis ain't no fun. Anybody that's on dialysis know dialysis is not no fun. 
every time you come off you almost don't know where you are head is spinning can't stand up straight so I wanted to get off I went to the doctor he said you ain't gonna get no kidney transplant because of your age ain't nobody gonna do it and I said well give me an application anyhow yeah. I got an application and filled it out it wasn't long before I got a call from Dallas saying come here we want to talk to you about your kidney transplant yeah. and they came in and uh, interviewed interviewed me and when I left they said you are eligible say so if, if if we can just find a donor that will match, you can get a kidney. And so I told my church and I had several of my members come and said, Pastor, I'd like to get to be tested to see if I could be a match. And the first one the first one that was tested got a call says you're not only a a match you are a perfect match for the bishop so i thought i was going to get that right quick but but got a little sick and had to go to the emergency did a catch can they found um, a lesion on my pancreas and, um, and a nodule growing on my lung and they said you're going to have to follow up on that and um, I went to my doctor the doctor said I'm not worried about the nodule he said but we got to check out that lesion they sent me to a specialist and I was in, in the office talking about my kidney transplant and she looked at me and she said you ain't gonna get no kidney transplant until we find out what's going on with your pancreas so that was a setback it's like Lord what next do I have to deal with to get this but I go in on the 25th of this month they will put me to sleep go down in my stomach take a biopsy of my pancreas and I just got a feeling I just got this confidence <laughs> I just got this confidence that that because I am his workmanship I have a reason to be confident so I have this confidence when I come out they gonna say it ain't it ain't about nothing uh, go on and get your kidney transplant and I believe in God in April sometime in April I'm going to have a kidney transplant because I am the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus and I have a reason to go in with confidence look at somebody next to you and tell them neighbor Bishop has a reason to go in with confidence because he is the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus. Now somebody put a praise on that for me. Put a praise on it. I'm confident. I'm confident. 